So folks, this is a tinted canvas. It's been stained and primed with acrylic paint, acrylic yellow ochre, and allowed to dry completely. And then I've sketched on where my waterfall is going to be. Uh, I want a little bit of a light source up here. So now this is all dry. I've just taken a little bit of blue paint and white and a touch of red and a touch of burnt umber. And I'm just gonna put this in to where I want the light source, just up there, okay? I've got a photograph. Somebody sent me a photograph and they want me to paint this picture for them. Okay, so it's kind of a commission piece, which is exciting. Okay, but there's no light source in the composition. So I'm just forcing me on, right? Just adding a little bit of sunlight up here. Oh, a little bit of sky up there, just like that. Just push that in. Okay, let's come down and work on the waterfall. So let's grab a little brush. This little rounded one will do and we'll put in where I want some stones to be near the waterfall okay now you could coat this in a little bit of oil just to make the paint flow a little bit better but i don't want to i just want to put on the paint as raw as we can and then we can blend out as as much as we want okay so i'm gonna have a what a waterfall crashing over there a little bit of a puddle crashing back over a little bit more of a puddle then crashing back over again and then into a little bit of a, a lake there with something in the foreground stones. I think there's a little bit of a bridge as well in the foreground. Okay, this is a commission piece. Somebody sent me a photograph and they asked me if I could paint it, which I'd be honoured to do. So I'm doing it. Okay, so why have I stained the canvas with a little bit of yellow ochre? I think the yellow ochre, acrylic yellow ochre, will work very, very well in this composition. We're going to have lots and lots of greens out there and if a little bit of this shows through that's perfectly fine okay so all i'm doing is just scrubbing in where some of the stones will be in the waterfall now if you don't get it perfect that's fine i always say this when i'm doing a, a painting for somebody if it's not just like the photograph don't worry about it because that's just my style of painting sometimes i add a lot more than what's actually there when i'm doing the you know the painting you know like i'll put a tree in or i'll move something out of the way we can use that sort of artisticness can't we that artistic license okay and we've got to do haven't we Oss? we might as well just be looking at a photograph okay so there's going to be some stones there this is just a dark gray color made again same as the sky but just with a little bit of uh black and a little bit more umber thrown in there so the colors will continue throughout the composition and if you put it on thin enough, the paint thin enough, not thin paint, just a thin layer of paint, then you're going to get a nice um, layering effect when we come to put the next layer on, the next layer of wet paint on. Okay, so we'll just carry on doing this. It's going to be a bit more of a major waterfall just here, so some stones there as well. Just push them in. There, like that now dare i put something down here already or do i wait do i wait well the water's in Whew, i don't know they're in now so and then we're gonna have a bank there of something okay just a little bit of a sandbar and of course we want some of that color down at, at the water's edge right with all the rocks in place okay and i'm just blending them out there's going to be lots of trees and greenery up here and i'm just blending them out so some of the leaves can cover some of those rocks and of course we'll highlight and and shadow them as we go along just using i'm just trying to move most of that paint off there so we're not going to get big thick globules of paint okay and i've tried to cover a little bit of the waterfall itself as well just wipe off any excess on the brush okay might give us a good effect okay take a lint free tissue Okay, just take a lint-free tissue and I'm just going to dab on and I'm just going to try and get most of the moisture, of the oil, out of the oil paint. Okay, doesn't matter if we go over a sketch or anything like that, just, just take it off and we're going to come back up here and put some foliage on. Do I, do I work on this first and then put the foliage on or do I get a, a lot of the foliage on? Mm, let me think about that one. So let's work on the waterfall with a bit of blue and white on an old fan brush. I'm just going to put in a fast flowing piece of water there just before I start with any of this rock work. Okay, blue and white just on there. And don't worry about it not looking 
too clean or anything like that this is fast flowing water and it was coming in one direction straight over so put your thumb or say your little finger on the canvas and that can be the center of this radius okay there, like that so it comes over the more you tap and play with this the more bluer it will get okay so there we go like that okay with this first waterfall in place i'm just going to rework some of this rock work there just to set it back so i want a little bit of a jaggedy thing coming out there like so okay and then now we can take the palette knife and get a little bit of his highlight color which is just a little light gray as we don't want too much highlight because these are being deep in shadow up here okay i just put a little bit of knife work up there to stop the canvas from vibrating okay maybe a little bit on the other side just there oh. if this doesn't look too bright and not showing up enough that's fine i can always come back in and, and brighten it up if need be if need be okay just let the cam let the knife graze the canvas there we go like that so I've got brown, a touch of brown on here, blue and lots and lots of white and the sneakiest touch of linseed oil. I'm just pulling straight down, straight down, go over the painting that we've just done under there as well. Just a bit of rock work that you can see through the waterfall and this is coming straight down there like that. Now, some of it's in shadow, okay? Go over the rocks because we can resort these, these edges out if we need to. But some of this will be in shadow. And some will be highlighted by the sky above. Okay, so we've got to be a bit mindful of that. Okay, and then we can come down here and, and, and really crash some of this over and over. And over like that. And some of that underpainting that, that this yellow ochre will show through and give a nice cast throughout the whole of the painting there's lots of little rocks there that keep getting in the way and causing some more splashes and falls like so come down there just keep working on it but make sure it comes straight down try not to go at an angle that will disturb your eyes bit more of a colour and we're going to go straight down there like that okay I want a lot of white on this one so let's grab a bit more of the white a bit more of the white and this one comes right the way over and there big splash on that one must be where the fastest flowing water is going there okay there we go Tease it down. Tease it down there. Okay, like that. Just pull straight down with these strokes. Because there's very little paint actually on the canvas, very little paint in the brush. We can't we can't go wrong really. You're not gonna create mud. And you won't get over blending as well. You won't get over blending if you do it this way. I'm going to use this very special uh, soft brush. I've used it as long as I've had it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to tap at the base of the waterfall with a little bit of white or off-white just at the base and just to blend the foot of this waterfall together. There's going to be a lot of, you know, mist and things just down here. Not, not massive amounts, but just there's going to be enough. All this water rushing over the top of these rocks is going to, create a little bit of mist and even in the photograph there's a little bit not much but if we need to sneak in a little bit more we can do and i'm using this soft brush wiping any excess paint off as i go just to tease that mist out of there and then just gently take it over there we go i think that waterfall is coming alive same soft brush and all I'm doing in it is, is putting in a very, very, very thin layer of paint. It's not thin paint, it's just a very small amount of paint, really scrubbed in and pushed around where the water is. It's a mixture of 
brown that's burnt umber a bit of black and some blue some white and we're just pushing it around just there i don't know where the water's going to go over there just yet obviously the composition that i've i'm painting is slightly different scale and size to the to the photograph i've been given but anyway i think that looks pretty all right so why have i got this other brush in my hand i think we've got so it's just a waterfall -y, a brush and we're going to have some splashes and stuff that are just on top of the water down there from the major water there that comes over okay so just float them in and i think we've got a couple more little little spillages just off some rocks here as well and some down there i think like that better check the photograph actually before i get too carried away with that i know there's something there like that and then we could just take those backwards and forwards like that and very gently float in some little reflections okay with a waterfall in place i've just taken a sponge a natural sponge it's actually synthetic but it's a natural looking sponge and just dabbed it into some different greens and we're going to start putting the foliage up here so if you can see what's happening there we have lots of different leafy looking effects it gives a nice texture and all i'm going to do is just coat the whole basic canvas really in this sort of manner just changing the color the flavor as we go along and then we can pick out some trunks and leaves with the brushes later but just want a, a bit of a general idea with the sponge there we go so all that part of the canvas is now covered with a multitude of different greens and it's because if we put it on with the sponge it's not too thick okay so the next layer of paint the next layer of wet paint should stick to it so i'm going to take a little liner brush and i'm going to start up here in the light spot and i'm just going to pull out some lit leaves some leaves that have got the sunlight hitting them just with a little liner brush like so and work back into the tree so we get a little bit of a different color and think of the form of the tree as well which which leaves are going to be in shadow and which leaves are going to be in in light and think of also which which trees we've got you know what kind of trees are there now these are deciduous trees according to the picture so nice little leaves that are going on there now when we work down or come closer to us i'll change to a bigger brush and pull out some bigger leaves so what we're doing is just working on individual clumps of leaves once it's all in place then we can put us as branches and twigs and all sorts of trunks and stuff like that in place okay here we go just keep at this <laughs> i need, might need to stand on my tiptoes to see the top of this painting oh that's a lot of leaves thrown up here onto this uh, onto this composition uh it really does look just like a, a mass of green leaves but let's take a little liner brush now and some thin brown paint and we're just gonna uh throw in some twigs and arms and limbs and whatever just throw them in not at random but wherever they will be will be so we'll come down there you probably can't see it on the on the camera but they're there thin it's thin what i've put on is not thin uh, i just put globs on so we'll cut through some of this with some twigs and i put a trunk in there or two and i come back in once i've thrown all these in all these twigs and sticks and, and wherever and i'll i'll put some highlight sides onto them as well if need be i've just painted a few rocks down here in the in the water and i'm just going to put a little bit of this gray greeny color down think this is where like a shoreline would be there's like a little wall that runs right across there so we don't have to worry about where the shore meets the uh where, where the water meets the the land but we're going to put this color down first and then we can blend in some of uh, some of the lighter colors and some of the darker colors okay let's just try and blend these two together this is wet and this is wet though there's very little paint on the canvas 
and now there's very little paint on the brush but we're just going to push these two together so we get like a a nice blender reaction of the deeper darker water and the water's brown if, if if memory serves me right and i've got a funny feeling where i know where this this is somewhere in yorkshire okay the 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 rain runs through the forest or the the hills and everything it picks up all the 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 colors from the the uh the leaves the leaf litter that's on the on the ground and it becomes like a tea you know like when you mash your tea it becomes like that kind of color and it's that sort of effect that you get in the water so it's it's like a, a oak leaf sort of tea you know we've got a couple more stones just out here so let's put another stone in there and i'll show you how i made those in the those stones there so just we'll just put that there like that that's just a, a little bit more yellow ochre and a touch of black is thrown into that color just shape some stones off the brush pretty worn out now but it's it's good for stony work okay and then just try and move and get rid of a lot of the paint okay bit of burnt umber and black we'll just tease that into the underside just push that in deep shadows of this stonework just push that in and let the two colors merge together and it goes off there might have something else there we'll have to work on that in a bit wipe off any excess and then what we can do is just like a pencil just draw you know and blend at the same time that shadow work down there now if you want it a little bit stronger put a little bit more color on and don't blend as, as heavy okay just blend those colors together there wipe off any excess and then just go into some stony looking color and then just start to pick out some first highlights. If you grab a, it's healthy if I grabbed a bit of paint. Pick out your first highlights and then highlight these rocks. Think of a rock shape of a waterfall crashing over this. When this is in flood, these these stones are going to get absolutely hammered, so they'll be be weathered and eroded away. And we'll go down there like so maybe a bit more color on this one this big one there like that blend the colors together but leave a nice edge there we go backwards and forwards teasing the colors together yeah like so just dive down into a bit of a lighter color now and then just pick out your second highlight we may even put a third highlight on this as well with a bit of just a bit of white or something like that but it's a very pale color there like this if you get too much color just zip it off with a knife there, like that we don't know what's happening there yet but we'll work that out as we go along to make some realistic uh, ripples down in the water just take a clean brush dipped into your thinners wipe off all the excess thinner and then just take nice little straight strokes and that should remove some of the paint and let the under canvas show through you know the ochres and stuff that we this color okay okay so nice straight lines okay it'd be very gentle don't plow it on and don't overdo it you can see i've already done a few okay and if you get one that's a bit too wobbly you know you could always just blend it back in and start again there we go i give a bit of movement to the water and it's subtle but we know it's there it's like a footpath like a wall that goes just about there on the picture um the other side of this path there's some grasses and plants and stuff so i'm just taking a little bit of a a greeny color i'm going to pull out some foliage 
That's in front of the rocks and in front of the water. But behind the wall. So then we can paint the wall on top of it. Okay, vary the colours. And we'll add some leaves and stuff as we go along. That's a bit darker, that's okay. I like the contrast there. So I've just thin this out with a little bit of oil. Not thinner, just oil. There we go. I'll just put some on there. And I think it goes all the way across a bit here. And it'll push your rocks back as well. Hide the rocks behind all this foliage. I've got a little light grey colour. Which is going to be the top of this wall. So I'm just going to push that in. I can still basically see my pencil marks that are just down there. Again, I'm going to put very little paint down. So use a, a stiff brush if you can. Uh, comes all the way across there. Okay. Just go across it and wipe off any paint that is in its way. This is the top of the bricks. Okay, so it'll naturally look darker there than it will there. It's picked up some of that colour. Push it in, push it in, push it in. Okay, and we can work on that with a probably work on that with a palette knife. Now I'm going to go to a bit of a darker colour. So it's got a little bit of brown and black in there and it'll come there down there like so these are going to be bricks old stones probably made out of sandstone or something like that but we'll have like mosses and grasses and all sorts growing on them really push it in and because there's no oil on there we can put a thinner layer of paint on a thin layer of paint, not not thinned out paint, a thin layer of paint, and we can blend a little bit easier and we'll not make mud or mush or sludge or colours that we don't want. We've got more control of the paint. And that's what we've done throughout the whole composition. More control of the paint. You can see I've just scraped in some of the bricks of this little tiny wall with with the, the tip of this uh, this palette trowel, this palette knife. And I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit of a pale stony color and just gently go across the top, get your perspective right, just across the top. We'll separate the stones as we go. There's a little bit of light on these stones here. So we just have to just gently put the side on and just pull to one side. Yeah, I love this palette knife. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, and then across there, maybe a little picked a bit of dark colour up there. It's all right. That's where the stone is. Okay, maybe grab a little bit more of the light colour. We can lay all kinds of stuff up here, like this. Yeah, and across when we get down there, we'll just pull some some darker colours down. Okay, I think we're ready to paint some of this, this dirt down here. So I'm just going to take an old flat brush and just push in some dark brown colour. Okay, it's just a mixture of all the dark colours really on the palette. Anything that we've got going black, brown. I think there's a bit of yellow ochre in there as well. And the bristles on this brush are absolutely worn away. But it's very good for scrubbing in. And pushing about the colour, the paint. Now where the path is, what sorry, where the, the dirt hits the wall, we can keep a straight line there, you see, like that, and it comes down. It must go down to like either um I don't know, maybe a, maybe the bridge or something like that. Maybe this is I don't know. We'll have to see more of the more of the landscape. I have a rough idea where this is, but I'm not hundred percent sure. But anyway, we'll just push this in and then we'll hit it with a lint free cloth just to take off any excess, any excess paint and oil. And then we can highlight it with some little stones and dirt and gravel and all that lot. And of course, if some of the underpainting shows through, well, that's that's the Brucey bonus, yeah? All right, let's just hit that with a towel. Now you can either lay it on 
give it a few minutes or you can just try and rub it in like so look at all that lot and just rub away the stain is still on the canvas the paint is still on the canvas it's a thin layer of paint not thin paint if that makes sense down there like that okay you can even carve out where your highlights are going to be okay i naturally left it thicker where it meets the wall because that will give us an instant shadow okay look at that that's no good throw that in the bin right so let's get a different brush okay you can even use a palette knife but i'm just going to get this brush again worn out worn away keep your worn out brushes because they do wonders for you now i think we've got some twigs that come off there and we've got some twigs that come off here but this is what we'll put in some gray stony stuff just throw them in like so just like you're painting maybe a big stone or something like that it's roughly the same color as the stones as well tie it all in tie all the colors together there we go just push that in push it about go with the shape of the path okay you don't want to go up and down or it'll look like a fence and we don't want a fence just yet we've got a little wall haven't we if you recognize this place please let me know down in the comments it's definitely somewhere up in yorkshire i recognize that but i think we've got a finished painting well i'm really happy at that if you like this painting give it a big old thumbs up if you try this one please share it with us subscribe if you've not done so already and until next time take care of yourself and stay safe I'll see you later. Happy days.